All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Now, recently we've had a few people hit us up in the comments saying they want to have a walk around of the Ranger and how we've got it set up to tour the country. Uh, now, we'll start this off by saying we do not think this is the best setup Ranger for touring by no means whatsoever. Look, basically we had the car already and we were just setting it up within a decent budget without going absolutely ridiculous and uh, just making it comfortable enough and practical enough for us to do the uh, the lap with. So um, let's start off with what it is. It's a 2019 XLS Sport Ford Ranger. Now, when we bought this car, we didn't have a large caravan. We had a little 16 foot pop top. So um, towing capacity wasn't an issue. And look, to be honest with you, I had no idea about towing capacity back then anyway. I was one of those ones that honestly thought you could tow three and a half ton all the time with these things. So come a long way in learning since then. Uh, but yeah, we made it work with our setup. So what happened was we went into the Ford dealership, Aaron and I, Aaron's behind the camera right now. <laughs> uh, we went into the Ford dealership and we said, hey, we want a Ford Ranger. Uh, we don't want a black one and we don't want the sport model. <laughs> <laughs> so we got suckered in. Uh, they got us good. <laughs> he, he honestly said, look, I've got this one downstairs. Just come have a look at it. And we looked at it and went, yep, that's us. But look, in all honesty, don't buy a black car if you're going to be touring around remote, dirty areas. Because I washed this the other day and it's already dirty. Maybe just not if you're a clean freak like Alex when it comes to cars. <laughs> well, I like it to look clean. But really, my level has dropped a lot since being on the road. I'd clean this thing all the time back home. Anyway, um, we'll just do a general walk around, show you everything we've done to it, uh, what we like, what we don't like, and uh, yeah, be able to show you the whole thing. So we'll start off around the front here. So we'll go with the bull bar. All right, so this is a Chinese made bull bar, Max Gen 2. Now, when I booked this thing in to get tires, suspension, uh, some wiring done, a few other things, the price was just going up and up and up. Don't mind the flies, guys, where there's so many out here. But uh, the price was just going up. We were spending so much money on the thing. Uh, so, well, originally I wanted the ARB Summit Bar, but I think it was getting up near five grand by the time I put recovery points on. This thing here was just over two grand. Now, that was included with recovery points, 4,000 4, kg recovery points. Uh, it's got the fat hoops on it, which I absolutely love. Very similar to the ARB bar. And um, it came with fog lights, LED blinkers and everything. Um, look, I really, really rate this bull bar. I know it's cheaper and I know that the finish on it probably isn't going to last as well as some of the other brands. But look, it's been on there for probably a year now. And it still looks pretty good apart from being a bit dirty. Um, recovery points are great. I've used those a few times and extremely happy with this bull bar. Now, the light bar, this is a steady light bar. It's really good quality. To be honest with you, I wasn't even gonna run a light bar or spotties at all. I wasn't just, I just wasn't gonna bother. Um, we don't really drive at night. The only time we really use a spotty is when we're flashing people just to get their attention, like your mates or someone on the road. So. The only reason we've got the steady was it came free. We spent that much money at McCormack's getting the car done that they chucked in a light bar. So I had them wire it up. And look, it is really good when we do use it. But to be honest, how many times do you reckon we've used it on the lap? Three times? Yeah, Four times many. max? <laughs> That's it. So look, I really don't think you need uh, a light bar or spotties. It's not a necessity. Great if you do have them, but you don't need to run out and spend heaps of money on them. Can we just have a time out? I just need to fly net. Yeah. <laughs> my filming get up. <laughs> All right, Aaron can't deal. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the fly net, I'm still like, ah. Oh. I don't mind that much. Like, they're annoying, but I, I think fly nets are annoying. No, it's better than flies buzzing in your orifices. <laughs> All right, so Safari Snorkel. Now, I love the look of stainless snorkels, but. They are so noisy in your ear and almost everyone I know who has one on their car, you know, touring full time 
just says what a pain it is because you've got to have your window up most of the time. They're so loud. Look, they sound cool on certain cars, but wasn't for me. I absolutely love the look of the uh, plastic Safari snorkels. And the reason I went for the V-Spec over the R-Max was ease to install. So I installed this thing myself. There is a video uh, from way back showing through the whole install. And look, it was really easy. The R-Max, you need to cut and fully modify your airbox, whereas this one was really simple. Fits straight in with uh, very minimal cutting and, and uh, mucking around. Okay, we then have our towing mirrors. Now, these are a Clearview knockoff. They are by Tough Terrain. Uh, I think I got them from Outback Equipment. Now, they're all right. I mean, nothing's gone wrong yet. They wobble around a little bit. But um, the main problem with these things is the rubber backing that it has to seal it to the car. It's pretty much non-existent. It's this tiny little bit of rubber and it was just letting water into the door. So I actually pulled these things back off after I installed them and I went down to Clark Rubber and got a bit of uh, just rubber seal, foam seal, I can't even remember now. And I just shoved it all back in behind there and uh, sealed it up and it's, it's done the trick. Uh, the other reason I went for these is they had the clear built-in indicator. You can get cheaper ones off eBay uh, of the, the mirrors themselves, but they don't have the indicator. And I really wanted that almost, well, they look good, but all, for a safety reason too, the more people can see your indicators, the better off you are. Uh, side steps that comes on the XLS Sport model. So that's factory. Uh, the, what would you call them? Weather shields. Rain covers, something like that. <laughs> they're, they're from Ocam, Ocam 4x4. They're only 60 or 70 bucks, but they're really good. You can crack your windows a little bit, not worry about rain coming in. All right, come down here, roof racks. So we went cheap. We basically just went for uh, the Rhino Rack clamp-on ones because at the time of leaving on the lab, we were only taking two kids kayaks and that was all that was going to be on the roof obviously that's changed and there's a tinny up there now but um i didn't want to spend a thousand plus dollars on a roof platform like i love them and they're amazing i'd love to have one but price we were just spending heaps of money so we just went for the cheaper option with the clamp-ons and uh luckily when we did decide we wanted a tinny we found the literally the lightest tinny you could pretty much buy and uh, it goes up there absolutely mm -hmm. fine with a little bit of modification so it fit on there. Uh, now our recovery treads, they are treads. Um, I'm a big believer in all brands are pretty much good with these as long as they're the full length and they've got the decent knobs on them. They all do pretty much the same. <laughs> Don't get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> as, long <laughs> as long as the knobs are good. And then you're gonna get out of trouble, okay? Look, just you don't have what to. She said. <laughs> you don't have to have like the the. You don't necessarily need the treads or the max tracks. Mm -hmm. Like they're all great, but at the end of the day, have something to help you get out of trouble when you do need them. Uh, now, to mount those, I got some brackets. I don't know if you can see them, Erin. Um, those brackets there. Possibly. Anyway, they're from uh, a company called Raptor Brax. They, I really wanted it angle mounted because of, well, the kayaks and now the boat to keep them off the rack, roof racks themselves so that you got more room to put stuff up there. And uh, so it was a bit of a combination of, I use those brackets with the tread mounting pins together to sort of make my own little Frankenstein setup, but it works really well. Um, they haven't moved a single bit. Yeah, absolutely perfect, love it. Is it just uh, me or is like, I feel like there's about 10,000 flies hanging around me and none around you. Well, you stink a little bit more than me, so <laughs> that's generally why. <laughs> they saw your fly net, they were like, well, stuff. Well, we're, we're gonna smash her. All right, um, canopy. Uh, so to start off with, we really wanted like a full aluminium tray and canopy. That was the dream. But with the amount of money we are spending doing everything else and, um, Keep in mind, this was like peak COVID time. Canopies, train canopies were just going through the roof in price. Absolutely crazy and the wait time for them. But, um, so what we ended up doing was 
I was looking around. This is the classic canopy by ARB. I got this thing second hand and I paid literally half the price of what you do new for these things. I think I got it for just over 1500 bucks or something, which is bloody awesome. Um, it's not the best setup, but it does the trick for us. Uh, on top, we've got our uh, 150 watt solar panel, which does absolutely nothing now because the boat's covering it. Back when we had the kayaks, that thing was fully exposed and it used to charge, but um, now it does not. Uh, we'll come around the other side before we go into the canopy itself. All right, so the awning. Now it's a King's three meter straight rollout awning thing. Um, look, there are some amazing awnings out there and we would absolutely love a big 270, but once again, money. Uh, and look, this thing's a little bit more uh, special to us than you'd probably think. This was actually the last gift that Erin got of her late mother before she passed away. It arrived so, after she passed. That's even, right. So. She, she purchased it before she passed away as a gift and it arrived afterwards. So look, really awning some one of those things too where you can have the best awning, you spend heaps of money on it, but how often do you really get the thing out? Like really, we've only pulled this thing out five or six times now. Yeah, and it's done in, the job every time. In nine months on the road. Uh, don't get me wrong, if the money was there, I'd have a big 270, one of the awesome freestanding ones in a heartbeat. But um, this thing does the trick, not a, not a problem at all. Uh, okay, come up the front here. Now, you might have to crouch down. Oh, not my leg. Can you see me? <laughs> no. All right, so look, this has to be my favorite. My favorite two things of the whole car is tires and suspension. So tires, we have the Black Bear All-Terrain 2s. Absolutely love these things. So we went for a 275-6517. Now that is a, the tiniest bit wider and just the tiniest bit, bit uh, bigger than our standard tires. I didn't want to go crazy with massive tires, you know, extra fuel consumption. Uh, and I just really have no need for it. We don't, we don't do major off-roading or anything like that. But um, I love the look of these just being a tiny bit wider than, than factory. And uh, these, they've just been amazing tires. So, so far we've done, bit over 30,000 Ks on them. Uh, we've had one puncture, but that was because of a little screw and it was after we did the whole Gib. So we literally did the whole Gib River Road, no punctures. First town we got to, one little tech screw straight into it. But um, I plugged that up and it's been perfect. Now, I also went for all terrains over muddies because one, noise. I know muddies are getting better these days and they're getting quieter and quieter. But yeah, I don't, we just don't need big muddies. Um, we're not doing anything crazy. I know they look amazing, but these things look really good for an all-terrain. I, I love them. We were going to go for um, BFGs before we went these, but I rang up uh, McCormack's 4x4 back in Brisbane where we used to live to uh, get all this stuff done to it. And I was getting prices for the BFGs and uh, Sean there actually steered me towards these tires because they'd been dealing with them um, at that time and they were saying how good they are and I'm so glad he did because it has been absolutely amazing. Now, the other thing, my other favorite thing is the Outback Armour suspension. Now, yeah. once again, I was... I'm gonna do this, sorry. <laughs> is, is, it that, the is that what I'm looking at? Yes, I've got other shots of them anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, look, I was looking at other brands like your Fulcrums and your Petters and stuff like that. But once again, the guys down at McCormack said, try this out, Outback Armour. And they were, Outback Armour are local in Brisbane as well. And that suspension is absolutely amazing. So it's got a 20, like a 20 point adjustable dampener on it. And um, it really makes a difference. I thought it would be a bit of a gimmick, but if you have it on the softest setting, you can really notice the difference opposed to how I've got the rears wound up to um, uh, the, the 20th setting and it just handles the van that, that little bit better. Now in the rears, oh sorry, so it's a two inch lift. Just a standard two inch lift. Once again, didn't want to go silly, wanted to keep things legal. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of Ks in this thing and I don't need a massively lifted car. Um, 
in the rears we went for 350 kilo constants in hindsight that's the thing i would change i would have gone for 500s when you think about when you got the van on and everything loaded in the back of it there's a lot of weight in the thing all the time it just would have been better to have 500s i think not that the 350s are terrible but with the van on i'd like it just to be that little bit firmer i think it would just change that ride just a little bit so next time i would uh, do the 500 kilo rears um what else have we got uh, on the bull bar we've got the oricom antenna for uh, the oricom uhf i'll show you that when we go inside but we'll come around the back now and we'll look in the canopy Oh. He's a mess. I know what you're thinking. What a shit fight. <laughs> and you're right. So <laughs> what happened was when I bought this canopy, it came with um, uh, one of the Titan drawers. So what I did was I pulled the top off that drawer. I, I rebuilt this around myself and I marine carpeted it all. And uh, so what I wanted was a good platform over the fridge so that I could store stuff neatly in there <laughs> but um if you've been following us for a while you'll know that when we got weighed in before we left our van was overweight and with a gvm upgrade on the car which we got done let us have more um payload in the car so i had to move that extra weight we had from the van into the car so that's hence why it looks like this i know it's terrible but Look, we're used to it now. It just is what it is. Now, the hardest thing about a canopy like this is that you got to get up on the tailgate and climb and reach in and get all the stuff from the back. It's um, it's pretty tricky, and I'd really love an aluminium canopy. If the money was there, we would 100% go for one, but at the moment, we just can't justify spending that much on it. Uh, so in here, after I built all that, I then did the uh, battery setup. So what we've got is two 120 amp hour iTech welds, uh, lithium batteries. But I had a little lot of trouble uh, charging those. I've got the iTech weld uh, BCDC 40 amp charger, and I had a lot of trouble, not because of the charger, the charger's fine, but the smart alternator in the Ranger, um, the charger itself needs to see 12.8 volts to kick in and um, the smart alternator keeps your start battery at 12.6. So it actually took us quite a few months to realize that it wasn't charging most of the time while we're driving. It would charge at the start of while you're driving, get the start battery to 12.6 and then it cut out. Uh, I've since had the smart alternator turned off. It's just a function that forward changes, you know, when you take it in for a service, they get the laptop out and change it over. And uh, that just makes it constantly charged then. So that has fixed it. Um, I bought this XTM uh, control panel because I, at that stage, I didn't have confidence in myself making a little board and doing it nice and neatly. And this was all set up for a good price. In hindsight, I wish I had done it myself. And next time I will. Um, I know a lot more now about 12 volt than I did back then. So I'll change that. Uh, so I just added the Renergy monitor too, so I can keep track of where my batteries are at. And um, down the bottom here, we've got a kick-ass 2000 watt inverter. Now we don't use that for much other than cooking with the induction cooker and um, charging a few just power tool batteries. That's really all that setup's for and running the fridge. Oh, and you know, you got your, your two Anderson plugs to run a few accessories off. All right, so then we've got the fridge. Now, when we left, we had a kick-ass 95 litre fridge. Uh, I seemed to sort of had problems with that fridge from the very start, but didn't realize and just thought it wasn't performing well but um, turns out it had problems with the display panel on it and it was getting the temperatures wrong. And finally one day, I think it must have been seven months or eight months into the trip, it just completely died. So Kickass were really good. They gave us a full refund because we couldn't get a fridge to where we were. We were up um, sort of outside of Darwin at the time. Uh, anyway, we got the refund and I went out and bought this Brass Monkey fridge. So one thing I realized was 95 liters was pretty damn big. We didn't really need it. We weren't filling it all the time. So I downsized to a 75 liter and it's been great. This fridge is really good. 
Uh, it's just sitting on the Titan fridge slide. So once again, a, one of the cheaper products that's from Kings. Now, that's a pretty average product. It's uh, one side doesn't lock in anymore, and the uh, rubbers at the stop that uh, at the stop rubbers at the front that make it stop gently have completely fallen out. So that thing's pretty much falling apart, but it's still just doing the trick for us. Uh, you see all this stuff here. That's just my um, breather tap and outlet for the water bladder that I've got in there. So. In front of the fridge, I built in a little box compartment and we've got a 60 litre water bladder. Um, that's from FlexiMate. And uh, that is a really good setup. We've got a little 12 volt pump that came with it. And uh, when we're off grid, we just go fill that thing up. It's full right now, but we fill that thing up and then bring it back and um, just pump it into the van. And that's how we keep topping up our water along with the uh, jerry can on the back of the van as well. Uh, so that's basically it. Oh, what else? No, two little Terralume lights up here. So you've got some lights at night time. Now that one points down here, it's really good, but this one now hits the outboard because when we left, we didn't have an outboard either. Uh, <laughs> so that's another thing like this was when I built this thing, it was meant to be all neat and tidy, just a couple of fishing rods, a few spares, and that was it in the back. And now it just looks like this. <laughs> anyway, that's um, that's you. You learn these things when you when you build a setup before you've left, and then you get on the road, and you realise what you actually need and what you don't need, and it changes a lot. I reckon you see most people who have been on the road for a quite a few years change their setups a fair bit because you figure out what works and what doesn't. So that's it for the canopy, really. All right, so the engine in this thing is a completely stock 3.2 five cylinder uh, coupled with the six speed auto. Now, the oh, well, the only thing we have done is a pre fuel filter and a uh, catch can. Now, that was um, their Ryko, that was something I always wanted to do just traveling in some remote areas. Um, I didn't want to get some bad fuel and you know have to deal with that. So that's the main reason why I did those. Now, the standard drive line in this thing, I think is absolutely fine. Um, we haven't even done a throttle controller. I know that's the first thing a lot of people do, but look, I am really happy with the way this thing performs. Um, I just, I don't, don't want to be throwing money at it, trying to make it go better when I think it already goes well enough. Um, on top of that, we still have warranty left on the thing so it had five years warranty when we bought it and what are we two years into owning it now a bit it's more nearly three nearly three years so we've still got a couple of years warranty on it so i know one of the main things uh people do when they're towing a caravan is um is the transmission cooler but I spoke to the manager at the Ford dealership when I got it serviced and I know a lot of people will say, well, they just work for Ford, you know, you don't listen to what they say, but I feel like I had a bit of a genuine chat with this bloke and I was asking him if we should do the transmission cooler and he, his honest opinion was, no, while you've still got warranty, just leave it as it is. Um, if one of those oil lines comes loose because they've got to run oil lines from the transmission all the way to the front and back um, if one of those comes loose and it dumps a heap of oil and you don't know uh, you're going to cook your gearbox uh, look i know they they do work it's proven they're really good uh, and if this thing had no warranty i'd definitely put one on but for the sake of if something does happen with not having one we're definitely going to be covered so that's the way it is at the moment. Um, no exhaust on it either. I'm not a big fan of exhaust on the Rangers. I think I think they sound all right standard. And plus it's just more money. We didn't want to keep blowing heaps of money on this thing. We'd already spent enough. Um, so yeah, not much. I won't even pop the bonnet because there's nothing to show you under there. It's just a standard engine. Um, come around this side, Aaron, and we'll go inside. All right, so the interior. Look, to be honest, once again, there's not much to show you here because that's one thing we really loved about the Ranger. It came, you know, pretty well set up inside. Uh, we love the uh, head unit they have in them. A nice eight inch with all touch screen, Apple CarPlay, 
it's really good. Um, we have no complaints with that at all. Now, one thing we did do um, is the Oricom DTX 4200. Now, the reason I love this radio is because it's dual receive. So we run it on 18 for the caravan, caravan is out there and 40 for all the truckies. So they're on different um, volume levels so I can tell which channel it's coming through. You can only talk back to one channel at a time so we leave it on 40 but a um, little press of a button and it swaps over to the other channel and you can talk to them. So I really like this um, this radio. We actually, I did a video of the install of this that was a long time ago now and uh, to anybody who put their handpiece where I put it back then, I'm sorry. I said it was the right spot, it's just here. That was a terrible spot to put the handpiece because it's right where your knee is. Um, and I'm only a little bloke, so if my knee was hitting it, I can only imagine how bad it would have been for some taller people. What um, happened was not long after that, and I was so annoyed with it, I just had it sitting in the um, in the like the coin area down here. Oricom came out with these, a magnetic um, mount for them, and it's really good. We just double-sided taped it on just underneath the uh, touch screen. And I love it there, it's really good. So easy to pull on and off. You don't have to look, you don't have to try to slide it down in. Um, so really happy with that. Now this thing too has a speaker on the handpiece and it's also got a speaker on the um, actual unit itself which I've got mounted down just up above the footwell. Um, so you can hear that thing really clearly. Uh, what else we got? Red Arc brake controller. Pretty much best on the market if you're towing a caravan. Really simple to use. That spot where we've got ours, uh, I didn't decide where that was. That's where it got installed by the auto electrician. It's probably not the best spot. It gets bumped quite often. Um, and sometimes you don't realize it's turned down to zero and you, you're thinking, oh, I've got no brakes and you gotta turn it back up. Not the worst, but um, there are some better spots. I would actually mount it in here. So this is, um, a, I think it's from Steady. It's just a little uh, switchboard, so that's where we've got our light, light bar button. So in hindsight, if we hadn't had that installed already, I would put my um, brake controller knob up there. We're talking about knobs again, Erin. Got anything Didn't to input? Like it. You got... <laughs> You're the one talking about them. <laughs> um, what else? That's really it. Oh, seat covers. So I can't tell you where we got these, sorry, or what brand they are. They are an eBay edition. So. Uh, I know there's some really good uh, seat cover brands out there like Black Duck and stuff like that and they're really good quality but for I just once again I couldn't spend five or six hundred bucks on seat covers so we got these things for I think it was only a couple of hundred bucks and I'll tell you what they have been absolutely amazing uh, they're like a canvas so before these seat covers I had one on here for when I was working it was one of those neoprene ones my god the thing got so hot all the time I'd end up sweating everywhere and itchy back from it it's like it's like you're driving around in a wetsuit um, so we got these ones and these are just a canvas product and they're really good they're made for the airbags um, so yeah I wish I could tell you exactly what brand it is but I don't know anymore I can't remember um, and I think that's about it in here we really haven't done anything the Ranger comes you know pretty much perfect inside as it is so um, I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up there, but I'll, um, I'll answer one of the questions that I get asked all the time on, on uh, Instagram is people message me directly and say, like, hey, mate, how's the Ranger towing? Uh, are you happy with it? And then they say, would you upgrade? Um, the answer is yes, I'm really happy with it. It tows our setup really well. Um, I always wanted a Ranger for a very long time, but the other side of it is, would I upgrade? Hell yeah, definitely. If we had the money, I would I would jump at a bigger car in a heartbeat, like a Land Cruiser or a Patrol. Basically because we're right on our limit with weights with this thing. And most people towing a decent sized family van in a, in a Ranger or a BT-50 or any of those dual cab utes uh, that are currently on the market, they're all either very close to their limit or they're gonna be over without even knowing half the time. So look, if money wasn't an option, I would definitely, definitely upgrade this to a Land Cruiser or a Patrol or, you know, one of the bigger American trucks. Really just anything that gives you a bit more payload, a bit more leeway with your towing capacity. But uh, in saying that, once again, very happy with this car and uh, it's, it's doing us just fine on this lap.
Um, so yeah, look, I hope hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, it's just a bit of a quick walk around. Um, if you've got any comments, um, not comments, if you've got any questions about it, anything that I didn't cover on it, anything you want to know, hit us up in the comments. Uh, and we'll get back to you. We'll make sure we answer everyone. But um, like always, if you enjoyed this, hit the uh, thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.